Let me ask everybody a real quick question before we even get into this. If you were on a battlefield somewhere, would you trust a woman to be able to carry you out if your legs got shot up? Normal woman, we're not talking about these bodybuilder women nowadays, even though I still wouldn't trust one of them. Would you be confident going into battle saying, yeah, all right, you got my six? All right, if my legs get taken out, you're dragging me out of here? Okay, cool. The answer is no. And it's nothing against women. I absolutely adore women. They're just as important to humanity as men are. Without women, we die off. But I believe that we are built differently. I I believe that there are certain things that men can do extremely well, and there are things that women do extremely well. And same goes for the other side. But unfortunately, our government doesn't think that. There is a bill passed saying that from the ages of 18 to 26, you're mandatorily signed up for a draft if it happens. Uncensored an update from Capitol Hill, the House has passed a defense bill that automatically registers men, register men who are between the ages of 18 to 26 for the military draft. This is part of the annual National Defense Authorization Act. As of now, the Selective Service is already mandatory for men between 18 and 24 years old. There's no military draft in place right now, but Congress and the President can reinstate the draft and force men to serve in the event of a national emergency or war. This hasn't been invoked in more than half a century. Some people on social media appear to have misunderstood this and believe a draft is coming or that they are automatically going into the military. And they're also considering it for women, but let's talk on the men's side nowadays. I don't know what Gen or Gen Z or, or whatever the hell all that is from 18 to 26 is, but I would say a vast majority of them nowadays, especially these people on TikTok, the guy who's telling people why he can't go to war, that's, that's who's gonna be in the draft. Reasons why I can't go to war. Number one, I get nervous. I get kind of nervous sometimes my hands get sweaty, so I don't even think I'd be able to throw anything without it slipping. Like, if I threw a grenade, it would probably just land at my feet. I'd be like, oh, fuck. I'm getting grilled and roasted in my comment section because I said I don't want to go to war. Hey, I don't think you'd want me there anyways. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, this is why the world, like, I'm losing faith in it. Why do you want me to go to war so bad? What the fuck am I going to do on the battlefield other than cry? No, I'm not fit to go to war. I'm not going to apologize about that. Like, I literally just don't think it's part of my journey. Wow, you don't want to go to war? No, what the fuck? Who wants to go to war? That seems like a lot of work. No. Reasons why I can't go to war, part three. Number one, I have a very strict mom, okay? She is a helicopter parent. Whatever my mom says goes. And if she says no, and I go anyways... Oh, I'm getting, I'm going to die before I get onto the battlefield. Two, I don't work well under pressure. That's why my ACT score was a 14, sergeant. Three, I hate confrontation. I'm not good at it. I never have been, never will be. Like, what if the other team gets offended that I threw a grenade into their trenches and then they're mad at me and they're like offended? Like, I would feel so bad. I have such a guilty conscience. So I would probably end up apologizing to them. Four, I don't think they allow blue Raz vapes onto the battlefield. Like, war sounds really stressful. And if I can't have my blue Raz 3000, I'm not going. No. Like, without that, I would be such a bitch. I'd be like, don't tell me what to do. Nobody talk to me. Nobody speak to me. And if you look at me, I'm committing a war crime towards you. Friendly fire all the way. So if you take my name out of the reaping bowl, mm-mm. Ah, nope. Double it and give it to the next person. That's who's gonna have your six? How do you strap your boots on? and get fired up to go into battle with that dude next to you. And look, I, I get it, some men are feminine out there, but this is the effect to living in a woke world. You have two ways to go as a man. One way is you embrace the feminine side of life. Guess what, you're not a woman, so that's probably a dumb idea. The only other side is to embrace being a man and just be a man. There are certain things that men do that makes you a man. One of them is a protector. One of them is being prepared. And that means for everything. That means going to war tomorrow. That means if there's a flash flood, how are you gonna handle it? That means if there's a fire in your house and you got two kids on the other side, what are you doing? And then obviously the women being considered into this, it just kind of seems desperate, right? The fact that our government is even bringing that into question. What if all the men go to war tomorrow and you are bringing women in too? Who is gonna take care of the kids? What if you deploy a man and a woman from the same family at the same time? Who's taking care of their kids? Why is this coming up now? 
Well, look, I think you have Democrats essentially arguing, look, uh, fighting on the front lines of a war looks very different than it has in the past. We're now starting to see, uh, you know, more cyber warfare, more tech warfare. And, you know, they're arguing that there is certainly a space for women in that, you know, line of fighting or, you know, part of the military that could be used on the front lines. However, it's getting quite a bit of pushback for Republicans who are seeking to put some vulnerable Senate Democrats, including Nevada, Senator Jackie Rosen and Montana Senator John Tester in a very tricky situation with Republicans already attacking those senators on this issue. Now, it's unclear whether uh, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer will bring this to the floor because of the potential political consequences of this. But Republicans very much pushing back on this, uh, talking about, you know, the gender identity politics and such. It just doesn't make that much sense. But I think even more importantly than this, is who wants to fight for our country right now? I am willing to bet 90% of the military are not happy that they're in the military under Joe Biden. How could you be? We're on the brink of World War III. We don't know what's going on with Ukraine. We don't know what's going on with Israel and Gaza. Russia is up our ass. China is in bed with Russia. If you're in the military right now under Joe Biden, you're thinking, okay, sweet. So am I gonna see my family next year? Is Joe Biden gonna make another dumb decision? Are we gonna get deployed into some country we don't give a fuck about? These are real questions, but especially for the people who may get drafted. Who wants to fight for Joe Biden? Let me see some hands. Maybe sound off in the comments. Uh, no one. Even people who voted for Joe Biden, I'm willing to bet if they're in the military, they don't like what he's doing. He's putting everybody at risk, not just within our military, but our National Guard and the civilians. But this whole thing kind of just screams out one thing. It seems like we're kind of headed towards a World War III. That's Switzerland. Man, that's boo -boo fucking thing. Pretty damn obvious. If you're willing to draft women or even consider it, maybe enlistment numbers aren't high enough for you. It's a pretty telltale sign that maybe they're preparing for something. Just something to think about, but this is wild.